stretch of I-10, where hundreds of people say their windshields have been chipped or cracked from the broken asphalt on the highway. They talk about frustrating. News for Jack's reporter Marilyn Parker is joining us after speaking with the transportation planning organization about this. And Marilyn, you know, we've received hundreds of comments and emails and phone calls about drivers about damage to their vehicles, all while driving along I-10. Yes, and I want you all to take a look at the pictures. This is just some of the pictures we're receiving. And I want to point out there's a variety of damage. It's not just, you know, cracked windshields or chip windshields. It's cracked fog lights. We have a cracked front camera here. Just a variety of headaches for a lot of people. Now, this is something that they want to see happen soon, and that's getting the resurfacing done on I-10. They don't want to have to keep paying for repairs that they say is not their fault. The emails, comments, the pictures keep coming in. A woman even sent us this video where you can hear the rocks hitting her windshield, eventually cracking and chipping it. Drivers frustrated, saying it's coming from broken asphalt where they drive on I-10 between Chafee Road and Hammond Boulevard. So what do we know about this stretch? We put in a public records request with the Florida Department of Transportation asking the last time it was resurfaced. We haven't received a date yet, but they did write FDOT's design manual indicates performance of an asphalt road is between 15 and 20 years. The Transportation Planning Organization, which is responsible for planning and prioritizing money used in transportation projects, says the resurfacing of this stretch is part of DOT's five-year work program. It's just unfortunate that the degradation of this particular uh, segment has uh, occurred at a more rapid pace than, uh, than may be typically expected uh, on roadways in our region. We looked on their website and the first stages started in 2020. Hubbard Construction Company was awarded the bid for resurfacing from the First Coast Expressway to the Nassau County line on I-10, but the stretch from Chafee Road to I-295 hasn't been awarded yet. The executive director says to keep in mind the money is there just waiting to be used. Can TPO do anything to help move this resurfacing project forward or faster? The mechanism that we potentially could help and look to try to address is can we accelerate overall in terms of the selection and delivery of it? And it goes back to what I mentioned before. Um, the additional challenges we're seeing right now with a uh, reduced amount of, of roadway contractors bidding on projects um, and timelines in their in their in their ability to deliver the project. Sheffield says while District 2, which includes Duval, St. John's, Clay and Nassau counties, has had a history of being proactive in maintenance programs, we're seeing funding challenges to address all transportation needs in the region. The deteriorating roads are an example of that. How are the decisions being made to say this much money will go to okay. North Florida? The entire country, every city in America, has this same issue uh, when you consider that the primary funding source of transportation is the gas tax. So the gas tax at a federal level is continuing to be a depleting resource for transportation. I would suggest that there's sort of an ebb and flow within each of the districts and in, in, in how the funding becomes proportionate. There are certain amounts that are formula to each district. So Maryland, spring, summer for those repaving, resurfacing projects can't come soon enough, I'm sure, for a lot of people. But what about the meantime? What is the Florida Department of Transportation doing? So I was told that they are sweeping and they've enhanced it to once a week, which is helpful. But the viewers tell me they don't know how much they actually think it will help because the road is consistently breaking. Now, in the meantime, for drivers, it's important that you remember you can file a claim with FDOT and we have that information on our website. Yeah, the most frustrating point, and you said it, is that it's not the driver's fault. At all, at yeah. all. Maryland. What do you do? Yeah. Yeah, what do you do? Right. Thank you. No problem.